seemed way too rehearsed for me and just weird. <music> Bachelor Nation, my name is Yanni. If you're new, I know it's Wednesday, but I didn't want to miss another recap. Like I mentioned in my last video, it's just it's been such a crazy time for me. And I did have to get my ring resized, so I'm wearing this silicone band, and I have to show you how cool these are. I found them on Amazon just to wear or just to have something to wear at the gym. And it's a pack of six. It's black, turquoise, purple, pink, and gray, and the white one. And they're so comfortable. It was only about eight bucks. If you're interested, I'll have it linked down below. So the episode starts off with the guys still talking about the whole Thomas drama and how he's not there for the right reasons. I kind of feel like it's the 10 things I hate about you situation, how Heath Ledger was paid to take Kat to the dance or to prom. And he ends up falling for her because he's saying that that's what he came to the show for, to be the next Bachelor. And also he ended up just falling for her. So is it the same situation? I doubt it. But I just thought it was, it reminded me of it because it's one of my favorite movies. But I don't know. I don't trust Thomas. I don't really care for him. The first group date is called... Be Daring in the Name of Love and the guys get broken up into groups or pairs and they have to compete in these dares and they have to take pictures to prove that they completed it and it was just such a fun date. All the guys on this date I really like. I feel like they're all very genuine and they just had to do silly things. You see Katie, Caitlin, and Taisha just laughing at the guys and watching them embarrass themselves. And as if it wasn't embarrassing enough as it is, they have to eat two habanero peppers and then propose to her. I can't do spicy, I've mentioned that before. So I felt so bad for them. Just even taking a bite of a habanero, I feel like I would pass out. I don't know, it was just, that would be too hot for me. And Trey, I feel like he eats habaneros for breakfast because it was nothing. It completely, it completely did not phase him. It was just a fun date and nobody brought drama. Nobody, you know, had any bad vibes. So that was really fun to watch. Later on at night, the guys are talking, waiting for Katie to show up. And Trey mentions that he wants to bring up the Thomas situation and... He has a, a disagreement with Andrew. He doesn't think he should say anything and ruin the other guy's time. But the other guys don't seem to mind. They all want him to say something to her. So he does say something to her and you can tell she just feels really sad about it again. And I feel really bad for her because this is like the second guy that is mentioned that they're there for the wrong reasons. And she you know, goes to the side, she's crying and yeah i'm kind of glad he said something just because i do think he's there for the wrong reasons um but yeah that kind of is where the date ends and trey does get the rose at the end and yeah i think that left a sour taste in andrew's mouth i don't think he appreciated that but i mean he did it and it didn't really ruin anything the next day, Taisha shows up to Katie's room unannounced and Katie is already kind of freaking out about it. Poor thing was like shaking. She had no idea why she was there. She thought she was there to give her bad news, but she lets her know that somebody from her past reached out to her and was interested in Katie and wanted to be on the show. And she does mention that he's a great guy and he's there for the right reasons. And Katie's just like, who is it? Who is it? And she's like, I'm going to let him talk to you first. She doesn't say anything. She kind of just left it a little suspenseful for her. We obviously already knew who it was. And we finally get to see Blake. And it turns out he slid into her DMs, which it seems like he likes to slide into DMs. But he was just very excited. And he told, I guess he was always, he liked her, I guess, or he was interested in her after the show. So she's just a little skeptical. She did mention that he's already dated two bachelorettes. And I was like, two? It was only Tasha, but then I forgot about Claire. And I'm like, that's not really his fault. I don't think that was fair of her to say that because he didn't put himself in that situation where he was just dating two people. It just happened. Claire chose Dale. And then that's when Tasha came along. So I don't think that was fair. 
but you can tell she was very giddy and she was excited about seeing him but she told him that she has other relationships forming and she has to think about it which she says it's completely fine and I was just very happy to see him I really like Blake during the cocktail party, Thomas is nowhere to be found and Katie isn't there either. So the guys start thinking that he's, you know, try to try to make his way back into Katie's good side and he's just trying to talk her up, which he does show up to her room and everything he was saying was just complete BS and you can tell like it was written all over her face that she didn't believe him. She just she doesn't trust him already, you can tell. And um I don't know, it was just very cringe to me. He was just saying all the right things, but I was just like so turned off by that. I'm like, okay, like that's enough. It seemed way too rehearsed for me and just weird. So during the rose ceremony, she starts giving out the roses and everyone's just kind of holding their breath, trying to see if she's gonna say Thomas's name, which in the end she does and everyone's just completely shocked. And I kind of was shocked, but at the same time, I kind of felt like he was going home. So she completely like tells him off and tells him that his bachelor audition was done and to get the hell out. And I love Katie. Kudos to her. She stands her ground. She doesn't let anyone walk all over her. And she's, you know, she's trusting her instincts and she's also trusting the guys which it's nice to see that she's not keeping the drama around to see or like she's not keeping Thomas around to see if he's a good guy or not. So I was very happy about that. And that's not where it ends because she ends up showing up to Blake's room and he asks her for like five minutes because he's not dressed. And I actually forgot to mention that I did like her gown this time. It was a really pretty gold one and she lets Blake know that she wants to give him a shot and he's very excited about it and tells her that she looks good again and he of course locks himself out of his room I kind of saw that coming and that's just where it ends of course we're gonna see a lot of drama next week because the guys are not happy to see him of course and Greg lets one of the other guys know that he's competition and he sees him going very far. So it's gonna get more exciting. I cannot wait. How far do you think Blake's gonna go? I think he can possibly be top five unless the drama's too much and she gets rid of him within the next couple of episodes. But I'm very excited to see them two together and some more of her and Greg and Michael. So yeah, that's it for the recap. I feel like it was very short but it was a very good episode. And I'm gonna close the video out here. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you guys next Tuesday, I promise.